Hi everybody, my name is Katisha and you've tuned into Kitty Crow Creations. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Kitty Crow Creations is all about exploring different acrylic painting projects. Whether you're a beginner or intermediate, we're going to go on the journey together and we're going to have lots of fun doing it. If you feel so inspired, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you'll be in the loop of things as to all the forthcoming projects that we'll do. And I hope you can join me. And once again, thank you for tuning in to Kitty Crow Creations. Bye for now. Hi everybody, this is Katisha and welcome to Kitty Crow Creations. I really appreciate you tuning in for this tutorial. This tutorial is a continuation of the tutorial we had uh, on Friday night, which was the live streaming of the wine and rose acrylic painting tutorial. And toward the end, we had a few technical difficulties and I wasn't able to finish going over the details of the rose. And there's a couple more things I wanted to do to the wine glass. And then also we needed to add um, color and detail to to the leaves. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to put them in the comment section um, below the description. I'm not going to go in full detail with all of the materials because all the materials are listed in the description, but I will talk about the the um, colors we're going to be using. For the rose, we have naphthol crimson, we have cad red medium, and we're also going to use some titanium white in there. And we, we also have burn umber, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and thalo blue. I put the thalo blue in here because we're going to go back, like I said, and add more detail to the the wine glass and the yellow ochre is mainly for the leaves. We're going to use it um, uh, accompanied with the ultramarine blue and we're going to also put some um, some burnt umber in it as well and possibly some some um, doxazine purple and that's for the leaf. But let's go ahead and get started with the rows. I started painting in some of the rows so you can see the color, but I'm going to go back and add more detail to it so you can see in more depth what it is you're supposed to be um, adding. I'm starting off with my my eight inch angle brush. I'm going to dip it in the water a little bit. Take some of that water off. Okay, this part of the rose, it actually has its um, naphthol crimson and a little bit of white. Sorry about my bracelet, it's just kind of slipping off. My little happy face is my, this bracelet, my brother made this for me. It's really cute. Cause you know, I like, I like to be happy. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and add that right about here. And that's what I like about the angle brush. See how it's getting those edges nice and nice and crisp and sharp. That I love. Just gonna do that right about there. And then we're just gonna come in and add a little bit of of the the naphthol crimson because we're trying to create an edge right here. And then we can just kind of, I'm going to wipe off some of my paint and I'm going to try to blend that in a little bit. I'm going to kind of do this part right here. Okay. And so then we have some doxazine purple that's going to go right here to give the shadow. And a little bit right here. The thing about a rose that I learned personally when painting a rose or any flower for that matter, you're, you're just going to have to learn to do little, uh, little bits 
in sections of the rows because if you try to tackle it in all kind of different directions, you're going to get confused. So try to stay in one spot. Like right now I'm staying in one spot. What I'm going to do, I'm going to come along here and I'm going to add some, some straight naphthol crimson right here. You notice I'm still staying in this section over here. I'm going to rake that over a little bit because I want to kind of want to blend that there. I'm going to put a little bit in that. I'm just going to go ahead and color all that naphthol crimson. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to get a little bit of that light color mixture. And it's possible I might have to stop in a minute and get my blow dryer so that way we can see the colors better. So that is that part of the rose blended. Like I said, I might just come back and put a little bit more detail once that's dry. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the Naphthal Crimson, put it right there and add a little bit of Burn Umber to it to darken it up a little. And once I do that, I'm going to come over here and get this shadow. And actually what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create an effect of the leaf, how it's um, curled, curled over the top here. And it'll look more refined when I start adding white to it. Which I'm getting ready to do in just one moment. Okay, got a little bit of white there, probably about right here. And a little bit here. Going to curve it a little bit, put a little bit right here, and a little here. I'm going to kind of airbrush, I mean, well, dry brush it right here. Okay, that, they didn't really show up in this area, so I'm going to try it again, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to let it dry and come back to it later. I'm going to come and add some of that white for a highlight over here. I'm going to do a little right here, and a little right there. Just rinsing my brush. Then I'm going to come with a little bit of that, a little bit of that uh, box of green purple and see if I can barely swipe underneath this first shadow. Right underneath there. I'm trying to see if we can get that to look like it's curving. And then also I want to get some over here. Try to blend it in with some of this, some of this pink that's already here. I'm going to wipe off some of my paint, and then just try to like dry brush it on there. Okay, just a little too much paint on there. There. It's kind of, it's kind of blended. I'm going to come in out a little bit more over here. So I think I see the edge of the rose. Okay, great. Now 
I'm going to add some, get some doxazine purple and work on my, my stem. And always remember if your stuff, your, your, um, your objects in your painting are not showing through or you can't really see the detail a lot of times because you don't have different values like you don't have enough of lights or enough of darks like that I love that stem but I can't really see it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come in here and get some get some titanium white I'm just gonna go through just a little bit so it'll show up That's kind of cool. And you notice I keep wiping some of my paint off when I want to just like dry brush it. I'll take off some of the paint. Okay, there we go for that. Okay, let's try moving on to some more of the other parts of the rose. Before I do that, I want to sharpen up the edges of this stem. because I'm not sure that I like the way it looks right now. That's her stem. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to color some of the parts, the other parts of my rose. Sorry about the noise. I was cleaning off my my brush. Okay, so this part right here, we need some more of the phthal um, naphthol crimson in the white. And I'm going to put it right here. Being sure to go around this part because that's supposed to be our flap of the leaf. I'm going to put some naphthol in it. All right. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get some naphthol to put on the top right here. And then what I'm going to do, you're probably thinking, why did you take out the cat red medium? You're not going to use it. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to use it because what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that as part of my highlight. Right now I'm going to get a little bit of that. You know, actually what I actually want, I dipped in the wrong thing. I actually want to get some that doxazine purple. And this time I'm going to mix the doxazine purple with a little bit of the burn umber to get that super dark color. I'm just going to barely go underneath there. I'm going to take off some of the paint. I'm going to try to dry brush it. Okay, 
Oops, I dry brushed that right there. Okay. And then I'm gonna get some get some white. A little bit of white. Kind of dry brush it on there. And I'm trying to what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to the white, I'm trying to like curve it so it'll make it look like the the leaf is flapping over. I mean the petal has a little bit of a flap. So we got that and I'm gonna get some cad red. What do you know I'm getting the cad red? So I'm gonna get that cad red to highlight it. I might have to come back, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to do. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. Gonna put some of that. I'm sorry, I have the cat red. I'm just gonna put some of it over here as a highlight. And then I'm gonna put some of it right, right here as a highlight. And then put some right here. I'll probably have to come back and put some more white. Now let's go over to, I'm not gonna rinse off my brush anymore because the colors are so similar that there's really no point. I am gonna get just straight naphthol crimson and put down here. So I've moved to this section over here. Gonna put a little bit of white. Actually, I'm gonna need the white. Yeah, I need it on the edge, the white on the edge. Get a little bit more. I'll probably come back. I'll probably let this dry a little bit and come back and try to do this again. Yeah, that definitely needed to dry. I'll let that dry a little bit and I'll come back to it. Let me get to my dark color. I'm gonna use some Burn Umber and Doxazine Purple. You can just use a uh, straight Doxazine Purple if you want. Uh, our main objective is to get some shadows. I'm kind of dry brushing this part too. Because I want it to be there, but I also want it to blend in because we don't want those hard edges. Okay. There. Okay. So we've got that part. Now I'm going to move up into this area. With just, I'm sorry, with naphthol crimson. I apologize. I didn't tell you what color I was putting in here. So this is just naphthol crimson. Gonna add a little bit of that dark color to it because this is more of like a, a a darker area because of the the way the leaf the the petals are is blocking some of the light that's coming in this way so it needs to be it needs to have more of a shadow. I'm gonna put some more doxazine purple in here so it'll stand out better. And 
definitely need some to give it a border. And see how that has that, I don't like that hard edge, so I'm just going to come in and put some more. Some more naphthol, and then what I'm going to do after that, I'm going to put some cad red for the highlight. Once it dries a little bit, so I'll let that dry. Going to move on to the next section. This section right here, it kind of looks like a triangle. Kind of something like that. Well, the top part looks like a triangle at least. Then it kind of goes, kind of curves like that. Then I'm going to go and do this little section right here. And then I'm going to stop and add some more dark so we can separate the colors. Get some doxazine purple and put it right about here. Just a little. I'm barely, I'm barely touching the canvas, barely trying to get those colors blended in. I'm just barely scraping over top. Now I'm going to come over to this next section right here. I'm actually going to do this part right here. There's a little, little piece that goes right here. I'm just going to get that really fast. In a sense, I'm kind of, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of trying to outline the, the flower to know where my major colors are, and then I'm going to go back and add highlights. Oh, I got water from the. It's okay. It'll dry. It. It'll dry. And there's a little piece that goes right here. But there's also a dark that goes right here and a dark that goes right here. That's the middle of the rose. I'm gonna put a little dark right here. All right, now we're gonna put some more highlight. We're gonna put some highlights. Put a little bit of white, right kind of like in the middle here. Just kind of, just barely touching, touching the surface of the canvas. Take, I'm going to take off some of my paint. The airbrushing effect again. And then you get some, I'm going at what I'm going in, I'm trying to put in my little highlights. One right there. Do 
some right here. Some around the outer edge of this. Some on the outer edge of this part. I'm trying to also try to blend some of that in so it doesn't have that that hard edge that I was talking about. And there's a little bit of a highlight right here. You could probably go crazy with these highlights, but they have to also be realistic. You don't want to put a highlight where there should be a should be a shadow. I'll put one right here. And then this kind of has one too. That's too much paint. Okay, so I'm just trying to dry brush that on there. And then there's another highlight. I personally love, you know what, when I first started painting and or sketching, because I also do digital art uh, for fun. And well, it's, all, it's actually all for fun. It should, it should always be fun for all of us. <laughs> um, I just went crazy when I have my do my highlights and shadows. I would just go crazy with the highlights. And then after you know I'm um, studying a little bit of art, I realized like you only put highlights where there's where there's actually highlights where the light is is touching. So then I started being more strategic about how I was putting my highlights on my art. And I think that rose is done. I think it's done. But I'm thinking I kind of want to put some of that cad red right about here. I don't know why I feel like I need to put that right there. And then put a highlight. That's what you do as, as an artist. You look at things and you make decisions based on what you see. And I am using a photo reference. That's all I'm using it for is as a reference. So if I want to change things, I can because I'm the artist and I can do what I want. It's my project. So, and you should do the same. I might have to let that dry a little bit, but I'm, I know for sure that this, this piece right here is really exposed to the light, so it doesn't have very much, very much high, that's way too much paint. It doesn't have enough of a highlight right there. Okay. All right, and I think our rose is done. But I see one more little part that I want to put a, a shadow. This needs a shadow right here. And another one right here. Oops, so I should have let that dry. Trying to blend that out because it's too too much of a hard line. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there for that one. And now we're done with our rows. We're gonna move on to our leaves. This leaf down at the bottom is just complete. Uh, it's a combination of Doxazine purple and burn umber. So we're going to go back in and make sure it has plenty of that. And the goal is we want to try to make it at least look like the top leaves 
or give that impression it looks like the top leaves. One more paint. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I'm having a great weekend. I'm really excited about doing these 14 days of Valentine's Day painting. Like I said, this is day one. Day two is going to be a fun project. I'm currently working on that one too. I should have it up in about a day, in about one day or two. So you can start working on that one. And then I will note, give you notifications when I'm moving on to the next project. Before we start the leaves up here, let's go ahead and get this, do this one. So we're going to do this leaf. It's um, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. Sometimes these uh, professional grade paints, they get really, really thick. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of white in there. And this is the color that I really want for my leaf. And then I'm going to add a lot of white to it. So. Okay. Let's add some white to that. And if it starts doing strange things, we're going to let it dry and then come back to it. Yep. We'll let that dry and come back to it in a minute. And as you can see, there's like little um, white marks from when we tra uh, transferred the image onto the canvas. You can always go back and wipe that off with a, a wet paper towel to get rid of that. And speaking of uh, putting images on here, sometimes what I do if I want to freehand the, the image, instead of using the transfer where I just come in and I freehand and I draw it, I'll use a watercolor pencil because it once I start painting the, the, um, the chalk blends into the canvas and it just disappears. So yeah, I highly recommend not using a pencil, but try to use a watercolor pencil. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with these leaves up here. The ones up here. I'm going to come over here. Put some ultramarine blue. I don't know why I feel like, I think that needs dioxazine purple for the shadow. Okay, we'll use that for the shadow. Let's make some more color for the, for the leaf. I want like an olive green type of green <laughs> an olive green type of green <laughs> I'm not sure that that even made any sense but anyway I want it to be like on the olive side that's what I'm shooting for okay so what I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna go in here and color all that that beautiful olive color I feel like I lost my image of my leaf in here, so try to get it back in there as best I can. Okay, 
so I'm just going to wipe off my brush. And then that dark color that we had, I think I'm pretty sure I need more doxazine purple on that. Put a little more ultramarine glue. I'll go with the purple. Let's see, we want a dark color. Let's see how it looks. Yep, that's about what I'm looking for. Might be a little bit too bluish. Let's put some burn umber in there. Yep, bingo. That's the dark color I'm looking for. Gonna put some right here. I'm gonna put some right here. Some right here. Take off this some of this off. I'm just gonna kind of blend it in. This one in too. To give an impression of some shadows on the sleeve. Do the same for this down here. That one. And then it's kind of going off right here. A lot of that dark color. You're probably thinking, why are you putting all that dark color on that leaf? You notice it's facing this way. It's facing this way, away from the light. But this little piece is not. It's like this little piece that's flapped over is causing a shadow on the other part. I'm just going to blend. Took, oops, it's got too much water on there again. I'll wait for that to dry and then I'll take it off. I'm just barely touching, barely, barely touching this. Try my best to blend it. Okay, now we're going to come and put the, the light part so you can see what's causing that shadow. And that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm going to take my same green that I had right there. And I'm going to add some, some white to it. Light at the top. I'm going to put some white for the highlight. Put a little white right here for the highlight. Try to outline it a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of a Barely touching that. I 
put a little bit of this dark right here because it's that's the flap. I'm gonna give an impression of the flap. And I'm going to come up here to this leaf up here and add a little bit of white because like I said, if you have dark and it's not standing out, it needs some, it needs some light to it. I'm just going to barely rake over the top of it and put some white on the edge of it. There we go. Okay. All right. I think we got our leaf. Our leaf. Okay, I promised I was going to come back to this one because it needs more light. So let's do that. Let's add some. I know it needs a little, needs a little white up here. I need some right here. Put some right here too. I need to really put some paint on there. Put some paint on this one. Trying to make my leaf curve. There we go. I'm gonna try to put some of that dark color inside of there too. A little bit more of this inside. I'm sorry, wrong color. Some more of this one in there. I'm going to put some more over here. I'm just going to try to blend the, the green with the white so it's not such a hard edge. Okay, so that's the leaf for that one. And now what we're going to do, as I promised, for one, I have to do the bottom part of the wine, the wine glass, because we don't have that. So I'm going to put that in. I don't know if you remember, that was a combination of thalo blue and it was also cad red. And then we also put some, some white in there. Put a little bit more white because we want, we want different shades of, um, different shades of the color because it's really is the background that's showing through. So see how that's the background color? So we want to use the darkest version of that as we can. And now I want to definitely use it to do the to do the edges. Let's see how that comes out. So it's not dark enough. We need some we need to put some cad red in that. I 
because we want it to be like a grayish color. And keep in mind, because this is at the bottom, there's going to be less, less of the light showing because it's the shadow. I'm going to use, use some of this color in the middle. Just some streaks, just tiny streak, barely tiny streaks of light. Just barely a, a little bit, just so you can see the bottle. I'm wiping my brush off. I have, I use a lot of old towels, so I don't really use paper towels because they don't absorb the The um, paint when I'm cleaning out my brush as well as a a towel does. So that's the shadow. I think we need to make that just a little bit darker. That's what I'm gonna do. Put some more of this light color in the middle. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it so it'll stand out. Because when it when it doesn't stand out, that means you need a little bit more light. So I'm just barely raking across that with this. Okay, so I want to come up and do the top one again. There's a couple of things I wasn't happy with with this one. For example, the edge. I think that needs to be darker. Sorry, my bracelet's getting in the way. Okay, so we got the red. I'm sorry, not the red, but the, the outline of the And then we had some white to highlight. This is really right, right, right here in this part. There's a lot of white right here. Then some right here. Use some more of my background color. I'm just kind of going to come over here and clean up this part too. It needs to be darker. I'll just wait for it to dry. Let me see. I'm going to mix up some more of the background color right here. Thalo, CAD. That's cad red medium, by the way. <clears throat> and then some white. Probably a little bit more day low. So a little bit more. So what I'm hoping to do, yep, there's probably a little bit more thalo. Let's see, 
trying to this better. I'm trying to get the background color in here so I can go back and clean up these edges of this of the the bottle top. See if I can make it a straighter line. See right here is just Try it. I'm dry brushing this on here, by the way. So now I need to go put some more. Thalo blue, cad red. And I want to make this dark as dark as I can get it to come back and figure out what to do with those edges. Put some more thalo blue. Because those are the edges that we're seeing right here. And then we can blend them in. Just the shadow part right here. That's what we need to have right here for this bottle. Make a straight line as we possibly can. If you can't, and if you can't make, let me put a little water on that, a little water to thin it out so I can make a straight line. If you're having a hard time making a straight line, like I'm doing here, you can always line it up with tape to make your straight line. So with that one with that same color down here. Okay, so put some of this in the middle here. Let me try to blend this out. Without losing the form of that. So I'll blend this part out too. And then we're just going to come in and add some white. And that'll. So we're looking for is the white to make it. To make it um, hopefully look like glass. I'm just going to add a little bit more white over here and on this side, and then we'll be done. We will call it good. But actually, before I do that, because it's bothering me. As an artist, I'm, I'm sure you know, you, you look at things and you think you're finished and you're like, nope, I'm not done. That's... Alrighty, I'm going to put some white over on these parts over here. Put 
put white right here. I want to put white right here. And I want to put some more white right here for a highlight. And then this this needs to be look more like white instead of blue. Not this one never didn't really show up very well. I'm going to get some more of that dark color and put it right here. Let my brush off a little bit and blend it in together, the two of them. I'm scraping it like I'm scraping over the top again. Get some of that paint off the brush. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of the dark over on the other side too, just like just right here. A little touch of white for highlights in here. I'm going to blend the two. And then what I did, I took some of that white and I took this over here and I just came and just kind of this is something I just made up. I just thought it would look great like it's really sitting on glass. I'll put a little bit over here too. I feel like that. I need to put make this sharper. That part is done. I'm now going to put the writing on the bottle with my paint pen. And then sign it and then we're done. So put that to the side. I'm gonna get my paint pen. In actuality, you can kind of put on here what you want to put on here as far as the writing goes, but I'm just going to put what, what was stated in the original picture. So right about here. It's Cabernet Savillon. Trying to get it on there as best I can. It's supposed to be like an interpretation of what the bottle should say. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving an interpretation of what I think the bottle is trying to say. Like, like I said, you don't have to put it. You could put it on here, Happy Valentine's Day, if you want.
think I'm probably just going to have enough room. Okay. All right. Let me see. I'm going to make this prettier. I don't like the way that looks. And then what I use for signing, I use this really cool gel pen. I love these gel pens. So let's see if it does what I want it to do. I think I'll sign my name right here. Okay, there you have it the wine and rose acrylic painting on the 11 by 14 canvas and i thought this was very fun and if you want to seal it you can use a varnish i use mod podge the only thing with mod podge is that it is kind of sticky so if you happen to stack one painting over top of another painting which you really shouldn't do it might take up some of the um the paint but i love the effect that mod podge gives when you um, ad apply it to your painting. So if you don't have any plans of stacking paintings on top of each other, you can use Maj Paj. It looks, I just like the glossy finish on my paintings. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to you joining me for the next tutorial, which is the, um, well, actually I won't tell you what it is. I'll leave it a secret and I'll I'll wait till I post it on YouTube. Like I said, this is day one of the 14 days of Valentine's Day painting. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you and in, in participate in more um, tutorials to come. And if you want to be notified of upcoming tutorials, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. And Remember, this is a journey that we're going on together. We're learning together and just being excited about painting in general. And we're going to have some successes and some, you know, some times when they, we don't seem like we're having successes, even though we are. But the most important thing is to have fun. Thank you very much. And I hope you tune in next time. Bye for now.